Hello. <laughs> so we're going to continue with the Sacred Traveler Oracle uh, messages because I just, I think that there is something to that and I'm just, I'm going to roll with it because like I said before, if you, if you've seen any of the other ones, um, I'll go where the energy takes me as long as it feels good. Speaking of the other ones, I made three of these already and I, I'll put them in a playlist, but I'm thinking, and maybe I just didn't even consider this, but I'm thinking that whoever would see those videos, like whoever, obviously if you subscribe to the channel, you might have seen all three. Um, I, I don't even know how, <laughs> you know, like YouTube works in that sense, but I'm thinking that everybody would just be shown all three and you could choose one based on, you know, what I say, like title or your intuition or both. And then I, I realized that it may not work that way. So, you know, and I, I feel like also too, part of these messages has been for me to release control even more. I feel like I, I probably said that in the intro of one of the other videos, um, but release control allow things to unfold, you know, exactly how they're going to unfold because I do struggle with that. Um, without further ado, let's get into the message. Okay, so um, we're basically just looking for a few Oracle cards. And then we'll pull a couple tarot cards on top of each one to get our message. So we have Rejuvenating Rain, Solitude, and Watching Clouds. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Clearly the theme here is to relax but like purposeful relaxing rejuvenating rain says clear the past heal the present solitude says in peace or in silence peace prevails and then watching clouds says lie back rest and relax very like four of swords energy because the four of swords generally comes after the three of swords which is disappointment rejection but the four of swords is about giving yourself the space and time to heal so there's clearly a message here about letting go of something in the past right i mean whether that's a relationship that could be something to do with your inner child um it could be a thought pattern. Uh, it could be a behavioral pattern. There could even be something about taking baths here, like salt baths, if you're a bath person. And then with solitude, I get this feeling that it's like allowing the energy to like transmute through you, but through rest. You know how according to science, right? <laughs> that some of our best healing on a cellular level is done while we sleep. And that's kind of like the energy that I'm getting between these two cards and especially lie back, rest and relax. I mean, rest and sleep is so important when you are healing something. So if you feel yourself tired if you're feeling like in your body you're just feeling a bit more exhausted or low energy like honor those feelings and allow yourself to take a break that doesn't necessarily mean like lying prone on your couch or bed or whatever right but it's it's also about like letting yourself 
take a break from the like daily hustle you know like pick up a book watch a show that you haven't w- w- watched in a while or that you want to watch um you know even like get back into a craft that maybe you haven't touched in a while because you've been busy that i mean maybe you still have the supplies for because at one point you were so you like gung ho about it that you bought up a bunch of supplies <laughs> Is that just me? No. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) It's almost like this feeling about reconnecting with your yourself, with your body, with your, you know, mind, body, spirit through, you know, healing or letting go of something it it like frees up that energy in order for you to come back to yourself a bit reintroduce yourself to you know this energy feel what it's like to not be holding on to this thing big hermit vibes too okay Eight of Cups. Yep. That's like double confirmation. Solitude. Nine of Wands. And this actually came out in the reverse, I feel. That is... Watching clouds. We have the hermit, the knight of sword, the hierophant. <laughs> I just have hermit on my mind, I guess. The knight of swords, nine of swords, the star, knight of cups, ten of pentacles. It's interesting that we have two cards that came out in the reverse. I'm pretty sure the Eight of Cups did. I mean, I'm just going to talk about it in both ways because in the way that I flipped it over. Anyway, so the Eight of Cups generally talks about walking away from something. It's recognizing when the energy of the, the things has been used or it's no longer serving you. And it's making that decision to walk away. But not only are they walking away, they're walking towards the Nine of Cups. And the Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment. It's purpose. It's choosing yourself. Cups having to do about our emotions. And all of these cups are turned over here. So clearly, this person has gone through each one of these cups. Like no stone has been left unturned, right? So with it being in the reverse, this could be resistance to walking away, resistance to clearing out the past to heal the present because literally, I mean, these two cards are, I mean, almost exactly the same. (laughs) Having the same meaning, clearing out the past, healing the present, you know, choosing to, to walk forward and with it being in the reverse it's almost kind of the opposite of what the meaning of the card is so again there could be some resistance on your end to walk away from a thing and maybe it's because it's comfortable maybe it's because you know it's the fear of the unknown maybe it's a thing within yourself where you're like i can't do better like i have to make this work because I can't imagine something better or I thought this was going to be the thing and I poured so much energy into this thing already that I can't imagine letting it go. And I get that. And also there is better because Something that is truly for you 
And something that, how do I want to say this? It's like, you know, that saying that some things are for a season, some things are for a reason. What's the other thing? A reason, a season, or a lesson. And either way, it's like very hard to let go of something if there's an emotional attachment to it. But, you know, I mean, we allow ourselves to feel those emotions. We allow ourselves to recognize what we thought something was going to bring us. We allow ourselves to recognize that that thing, that person, that situation, whatever, it just, it wasn't what we expected. And really, we deserve better. And with solitude and silence, peace prevails. We have the nine of wands, which also came out in the reverse. This person is by themselves. The Nine of Wands is the wounded warrior. So clearly this is something, you know, I mean, like you've been through it. This hasn't been easy. And again, right, because wands talk about action, communication. It's how we express our creativity, how we express our passions, how we communicate those things. And I see wands as also being information. It's also, you know, the lessons that we pick up along the way. Because, you know, when we're taking actions towards things, we're learning as we go, right? So that's how we become wise. And that's how we pick up wisdom, right? Is by actually doing something, trying something, seeing how it goes. And there always kind of seems to be this point where um, we just feel like our asses are thoroughly kicked. <laughs> like, you know, just the lessons, the unmet expectations, like I was saying over here. But with the Nine of Wands, it's saying you're almost there. Don't give up. Like, it's time to take a rest, but it's not time to give up. And with it being in the reverse, generally the reverse meaning is like the opposite of the, the meaning of the card. So this is telling me that, again, there is something that needs to be let go of. And that could be continuing to try to make something work that is just clearly not and again I mean that would depend of course on your situation that could be with a person that could be with a job that could be with you know something in your life that you are trying to to do because maybe too like you already know in some fashion like you already know what you either need to do or should do, and I hate the word should, but it always just like finds its way out there. <laughs> and again, there there is this resistance here. And maybe you're just kind of at this place of like giving up entirely. <laughs> It's also interesting because in silence, peace prevails. This is, with this being in the reverse, this is not peaceful. This would be like, you know, pushing through no matter what. Instead of, you know, stopping, catching your breath, Maybe even letting those lessons catch up with you, you know? Nines are also individual completion. So there is a level of completion that is available here. And then with the watching clouds lie back, rest, and relax, we have the Hierophant. And the Hierophant generally talks about 
traditional institutions. It's also like the passing on of knowledge. You know, I mean, we have these different symbols around this window here, which would sim signify or symbolize different modalities. And this feels a lot like what I was saying before about mind, body, spirit. This is definitely more spirit. Like it could even be returning to a spiritual practice or creating one. You know, which could literally just be breath work. It could be meditation. It could be, um, you know, going into a community or getting involved with some sort of community. Attending circles or something along those lines. It's also even about education. So this could have something to do, this whole thing could have something to do with a decision to continue with your education. It could have to do with marriage, but it could also have to do with divorce. And with it paired with the lie back, rest and relax. I mean, that's why at first I was saying, you know, I mean, it could just be introducing or creating a spiritual practice and that could even be what helps you through the this situation because like i was saying in the beginning it's like there's this energy that is you know kind of ready to be moved but it's almost like clearly it needs to be done gently and it's almost like, you know, creating the space in order for that energy to be transmuted. And then we have the Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords is, I mean, it's the fastest moving knight in the deck. We see these birds that are getting out of its way. Swords have to do with our minds. This could be a new idea, a new perspective. And it's like through this process, there it creates this, like I said, it creates the space. It, it allows the energy to be available to switch your focus onto something else. This could be a new perspective. It could be a new thought, a new idea, but it's something that you want to move towards and like put into practice. And it could be a new perspective on whatever has been on your mind. The Nine of Swords talks about, you know, fear, doubt, anxiety. They're sleeping here. So again, even, you know, with the, the rest and solitude aspect. But also, unlike the traditional Nine of Swords, and on the traditional Nine of Swords, like they're sitting up in bed, they have their hands on their face. Like you can clearly see that they are in a state of duress. Like they're not good. And, but in this card, <laughs> they're sleeping. They've laid down their sword. Almost like, you know, there's all of these crows around too that no doubt are making noise. But, I mean, are they there for protection? Also, the nines, again, like I said, there is a level of individual completion. So there is something, and especially with the nine of swords being in, or the knight of swords being in front of that, this could be a person, a new person. It could be somebody who is giving you that perspective shift that is allowing you to let go of something. And again, swords having to do with our minds, right? So this is 
how we perceive our realities. It's our ego, because that's generally where we hear our ego is in our minds. And our ego is created by the stories that we attach to experiences or feelings that we've had, right? So again, I mean, there would be some sort of release going on here with this Nine of Swords. And then we have the Star card, which is also air, it's Aquarius. All this mental stuff, none of this <laughs> is very mental. But then at the bottom of the deck, we have three mental cards. And the star is about trusting the process. It's faith. It's hope. I always see the star as being that space between where we manifest in the 5D and where we are in the 3D. And it's like, you know, bridging those two things and trusting that if the, the energy is available to be trying to manifest the thing in the, in the 5D, then it would be available in the 3D also. So it's, you know, it's allowing that bridge to happen, trusting the process. This is also a card about, you know, being in the spotlight, being in the center of attention. And then we have the Knight of Cups behind that. So <laughs> we have the, I'm just going to lay these down here. We have the Knight of Swords, quick, quick moving, right? I mean, again, you know, it could be bringing something to you, delivering some sort of message, to you. Nine of Swords, you know, it would create this release. The Star card would be trusting that this completion is, it's like for your highest good with the Star card. It always is. And then with the Knight of Cups, the Knight of Cups is an offer coming in. It could be an apology. It could be um, something that would, this is like a knight in shining armor, literally. Like that's what they're wearing. Right? And frankly, if this does have to do with a relationship or the way that you've even been approaching relationships or the way that you have, um, perceived or had an expectation of a relationship it would be like releasing this kind of arrogant cocky um, mind games manipulative type of energy allowing yourself to release that the star card comes in that starts you know putting connecting the dots for you because now that you're over this, there's an opportunity for the Knight of Cups to come in. And it may not even be somebody or in a way that you imagined it. Because then after the Knight of Cups is the Ten of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles is, you know, happy home, happy life. It's abundance it's a legacy there's a generational wealth aspect to it also so it's like building something together now it doesn't have to be relationship i just wanted to go through that though this could be literally in any area of your life this could be about work how you make your money how you spend it you know how you enter into jobs or how you leave jobs even because I know that's hard too and then we have the two of wands behind which is about I mean literally choosing a new direction like you know again the sky is a limit so this is beautiful and it all starts with letting go of something 
allowing something within you that is ready to be healed and ready to be released to actually be healed and released. And I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.